Hey there, I'm Andy Stoddard. Many of you have received daily emails and text messages from me uh, in the form of a reflection or devotional or Bible study for many years, going back 20 years. I probably have folks on my list that have uh, I've known for going back to my first appointment in the Delta. Uh, I've always enjoyed uh, trying to interject scripture into your life, trying to find creative ways to help you study the Bible. So for many years, I've written a daily reflection, uh, taking a Bible verse, unpacking it, and I've done it in a variety of ways. I have um, I've done, used the Book of Common Prayer as a guide. We've gone through books of the Bible. I've taken your favorite verses. I've, I've done it in a variety of ways throughout the years. And with I find myself in life now having a lot of responsibilities, both church-related and personal, that I didn't have the time to devote these reflections like I like doing. I've enjoyed doing them, and like I said, I think many of you have enjoyed receiving them. So I took a little break, and it was, frankly, uh, interesting to find some additional time in my day uh, to, to do other things. And so I, I've enjoyed that, and I think it's helped me in my own personal scheduling. But I, I also enjoy getting the chance to, to unpack God's Word with you. I, I miss doing this. So as I thought through it, I tried to think, what's a simpler way that I can do this? And I began to think, well, let me try this. I don't know if we'll do this forever. This may be a limited time thing. This may be a trial run. But what I'm going to do is at least the rest of this Holy Week. Today, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And maybe even a little something this Saturday. I'm going to record a little brief video that you can watch. Uh, I'm also going to do it as a podcast where you can listen to, and hopefully these reflections can help you get a little bit more out of Holy Week. If you like it, let me know. Uh, I'll keep it on my personal blog that I've had for years. I'll, I'll, I'll upload these to YouTube and then to there, and then share them with you through text message, through email, through things such as that. Give me feedback. Do you like this? Do you find this something helpful? Uh, is this a, a good thing for your faith? Oh, and I'll also podcast it through our um, church podcasting um, platform that I put my daily my weekly sermons on as well so I, I'll, I'll share all these links both in the video below and then on my website so but I, I really want to hear from you um, is this something that you find helpful uh, is this a, a good addition to your spiritual life would you like to see me do more of this but I, I just want to try to find ways to help um, help each of us grow spiritually and learn more so today is Wednesday um, in Holy Week, sometimes this day is called Spy Wednesday. Um, and you're going to see why, because this is the day tra traditionally that Judas agrees to betray Jesus. So we're going to read um, right now through um, in Luke's Gospel, reading Luke uh, chapter 22. Uh, we're going to read verse uh, 3 through 6. Then Satan entered into Judas called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray him, him being Jesus, to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray him to them when no crowd was present. So we see Judas here betray Jesus. And um, there's a couple things I think that are interesting in this text. First, we can, we can unpack um, what Judas was trying to accomplish. I talked about this last Sunday in my sermon, how when Jesus entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, the crowds were chanting Hosanna, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna, da Hosanna to the Son of David. David is a very Son of David is a very specific reference. Um, it's this notion to having uh, an earthly king. They wanted a son of David, someone to inherit the Davidic earthly kingdom mantle, and so they were expecting Jesus to come in as this anointed one or Messiah who would be the one who would restore the kingdom to Israel, the kingdom that was taken in in golly. 586 BC, Babylon, and then Persia, and then Greece, and then Rome. Somebody was always oppressing the Jewish people. There was always someone over them. So they were looking for this Davidic king to come and to make all things right, to restore all things. Jesus tells them that his kingdom is not of this world. You may remember in the apostles, there was uh, an apostle who was a zealot. These zealots were someone who wanted um, a violent overthrow of Rome. So some think that maybe what Judas was doing here was he's trying to, when he betrayed Jesus, he was trying to force 
Jesus' hand. Well, if you are the Messiah, if you are the one who's going to throw off Rome, if you are the one who's going to lead us out of this, well, let, you're not doing it. <laughs> Let's force your hand. So some scholars think that's maybe what Judas was doing. I, I don't know, maybe. But I, I like that what Luke emphasizes here is this, the spiritual reality. Then Satan entered into Judas called a scary. That's verse 3. We see the reality in this entire story of evil. We see the devil at work. We see Satan entering into Judas. We see evil over we see evil at work. And I think that's why Holy Week is so important. I think that's why Holy Week is so important. Because sometimes we get in such a rush to get to Easter. Sometimes we get in such a rush to get to the empty tomb that we forget to stop and look at the cross. We forget to stop and look and consider what Jesus went through for our sake. We get to, we forget to stop and look at what this all cost. And we forget to see the reality of evil in the midst of this. Yes, the devil entered into Judas, was what Luke tells us. We see the devil at work and evil at play. But going back to the very beginning in Genesis 1, 2, and 3, in the creation of, of Adam and Eve, and then later in their fall, we see the devil was at work there too. I think sometimes we can make evil too clinical, if you will. You know, that's one of the things that I read a book years ago called The Death of Satan. And what it talked about was how as our culture has become less spiritual, if you will, and we become more clinical. So the problem with our world today is lack of resources, lack of education, lack of money. By the way, those things are, are, are things we should work against. As Christians, we should work to increase education. As Christians, we should work to increase everyone's ability to earn and have a good living. But my, I'm sitting in my granny's chair. My granny never learned to drive. My granny didn't have much by worldly standards. But she loved Jesus. And she loved her church. And she was a good person. Poverty doesn't make one evil. Wealth doesn't make one good. In Judas, we see the spiritual reality at play here and how the devil even was able to tempt and corrupt one of Jesus' closest ones. Somebody that sat at the table with Jesus. So I think I think it's a call for us on this Holy Wednesday for us to examine ourselves. What are our motives? Are we allowing evil a foothold in our life? Are we giving space in our life to the devil? Are we giving the devil room to operate and to corrupt us? Or are we being steadfast with our love of Jesus and our dedication to Jesus and our worship of Jesus? Judas was disappointed, perhaps, with what Jesus was doing. So he betrayed him. He gave the devil room in his life. And the devil acted. The devil corrupted him. And the devil eventually led to his own destruction. So I'll just say to you, friends, in this Holy Week, as we, as we approach Monday, Thursday, tomorrow, as we approach Good Friday, give yourself space today to do something that apparently Judas didn't do. Give yourself space in your life to allow the Holy Spirit to search you. Where in your life are you giving evil a place to grow? Where are the parts of your life that you've not given over completely to Jesus? Where are the hurts, the disappointments, the pains in your life that you have not allowed Jesus to redeem? The Bible says, do not give the devil a foothold. We see here that Judas did. And because Judas did, we see the damage that it caused. We see Jesus overcame. We see Jesus rose from the dead. But we see, when we read the rest of Judas' story, we see the damage it caused to Judas. So today, friends, know as John 10.10 10 tells us, the thief comes to rob, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. So where in your life could evil be lurking? Where in your life could the devil be trying to corrupt? Where in your life could the devil be trying to tempt? Where in your life could evil be at work? Give the Spirit space in your life to search for these places and to, then to allow the Holy Spirit to redeem and give them to Jesus. So today, don't give the devil a foothold. See what evil did to Judas, and may we be careful that we do not follow in his steps, but may we follow in the steps of Jesus, the author, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith, who rose will come again and make all things right. I hope you have a blessed Holy Week. And like I said, let me hear from you. If you enjoy these videos, if you think there's something worthwhile that you'd like to see me doing, continue to do, um, message me, uh, comment below, uh, reach out to me. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening on podcast form. And I hope you have a great Wednesday. Look forward to talking to you tomorrow on Monday, Thursday. Thanks.